Hi everyone, welcome to Horizon Hub and today we're going to be discovering the top 10 places to visit in the Queen of the Adriatic, Venice, Italy. This is Venice, a magical city made up of nearly 120 islands and 177 canals that lie nestled between the Po and Piave rivers that funnel out in the Adriatic Sea. This city has been dubbed the Queen of the Adriatic because of its historic importance as a naval power and economic metropolis. Interested already? Remember to watch until the end to find out a secret hidden gem of this city that only locals know. So sit back, relax, and let's take a tour of the magnificent Queen of the Adriatic. First up, we have the iconic Doge's Palace. Did you know this used to be the residence of the highest authority in the Venetian Republic, the Doge? The palace is now converted into a museum and is home to some of the most beautiful works of art by renowned artists like Veronese, Titian, and Tintoretto. You'll find a variety of sculptures, a courtyard, the Museo dell'Opera, the Doge's apartments, and the institutional chambers here. So, come on! Let's explore this magnificent palace together! Next on the list is the Guggenheim Museum. This museum is a must-see for art enthusiasts. But why, do you ask? Because it houses some of the most remarkable works of the masters of the Cubism, Futurism, and metaphysical painting movements like Picasso, Braque, Duchamp, and many more and the venue Palazzo Venier dei Leoni offers some breathtaking views of the Grand Canal. So make sure you head out to the terrace, take a stroll in the garden, and enjoy the beauty of this historic city from one of its most famous landmarks. The third on our list, we have the Murano hand-blown glass. This is one of the oldest forms of art in Venice and it's truly fascinating to watch the artists blow the glass by hand. However, beware of tourist traps and make sure you buy authentic Venetian glass for a genuine souvenir shop. The island of Murano is home to some of the great masters of this ancient art, so make sure you schedule a visit to witness this incredible art form. Our fourth item on our list is the summit of St. Mark's Bell Tower. You can get one of the best views of Venice and the Basin of San Marco from the top of the bell tower in St. Mark's Square. On days with a clear sky, you can even make out the Dolomites. The only main drawback is the long wait times and high admission price, currently set at 10 euros, which is only available on site. For a great alternative, stick around until the end of the video for a viewpoint with arguably even better breathtaking views of this stunning city. Coming in at number 5 is the Street Paintings of Venice. The street art in the Queen of the Adriatic was noticeably more understated than in other European towns you will visit. During a stroll, you could come across some murals, but they won't be enormous. Instead, they'll be a collection of little pieces that each have their own message smile, or comedy to share. Many boutiques and art galleries in Venice provide original takes on the city's most recognizable monuments. Fun fact, Blob is a little Italian artist based in Florence. After he began exhibiting his work in Catalonia, Spain in 2013, it has spread to several locations across Europe. His project titled Art San Notare or Art Can Swim is a fusion of the styles of several well-known paintings with his own. He sees his art as a symbolic of the difficulties of living and an example of how creativity can flourish despite adversity. His piece in Venice are a fitting tribute to this magnificent floating city's history of perseverance and creative dominance that thrives to this day. Sixth is the Venetian Arsenal. The Venetian Arsenal is a complex of former shipyards and armories that was once the largest industrial complex in Europe. Today, visitors can explore the vast arsenal, which was once the heart of the Venetian Republic's naval power. The arsenal is home to several museums, including the Naval History Museum, 
where visitors can learn about the history of the Venetian Navy and see historic artifacts, including ancient galleys and weapons. In addition to its museums, the arsenal is home to many historic buildings, including the 16th century Renaissance style arsenal gate, which was once the main entrance to the complex. Visitors can also see the impressive arsenal shipyard which dates back to the 12th century and was once capable of producing a new ship every day. From its museums to its historic buildings, there is plenty to see and explore at this iconic Venetian landmark. Rialto Market is number 7. Rialto Market is comprised of two distinct areas, the Pescaria for seafood and the Herbaria for produce. If you want to get a feel for Venetian life and pick up some freshly caught Adriatic seafood, garden fresh veggies, and vibrant blooms, this is the place to go. For a pro tip to avoid the crowds, the Rialto market is less hectic in the morning, making it ideal for a stroll. As a quick fact, you should never touch the vegetables. The implications of these extend beyond the Rialto market and throughout Italy. Get what you need by requesting it, and the seller will gladly provide you with the finest examples of that good. Coming at number 8 is the Cadario, the cursed Venetian mansion. Cadario, a palace with magnificent Venetian Renaissance architecture near the Grand Canal, will undoubtedly be recommended as the city's most haunted location by any guide or any local. From its construction in 1487, the building's owners have suffered a mysterious and seemingly endless string of fatalities. Most recently, John N. Twistle, the famous bass guitarist of The Who, was renting Cadario only one week prior to his tragic demise in 2002. To get a great view of the building, it can be seen from the front near the Grand Canal stop called S. Maria del Giglio, and you can see the back of the building from the Guggenheim Museum. 9th Canareggio or Fundamenta Misericordia Canareggio is one of the most popular neighborhoods in all of Venice. It's hip and trendy, with bars where you can kick back with some good drinks and delicious seafood and enjoy stimulating conversation. It's true that not every single canal and street in Canareggio has this atmosphere though. Examples include the abundance of eateries catering to tourists in the neighborhood surrounding the railway station. Even if there are many wonderful places to visit in the Queen of the Adriatic, a real favorite is La Fundamenta Misericordia, a canal where you can relax after a long day. There are a ton of fun hangouts perfect for mingling with the locals and delicious restaurants to fill your stomach. The Venetian Ghetto is also nearby and a great place to experience Jewish culture and try authentic Jewish cuisine. If you were in the area of St. Mark's Square, you would get a very different vibe from here. Once you leave the congested streets behind, you enter an area with vast canals and a more relaxed pace. Canareggio is home to several excellent restaurants and you can see them all by booking a spot on a guided culinary tour. For your first night in Venice, this is an excellent option. And last but not the least, Isola di San Michele. You may be unaware of the many islands that dot the Venetian lagoon since most visitors stick to the more well-known city of Venice. Murano and Burano are the second and third most visited islands, although few visitors venture to them. But alas, we must also include Isola di San Michele. Since the early 19th century, San Michele has been used as Venice Cimitero or cemetery. It consists entirely of churches and long, exquisite rows of marble monuments. No people live there. I realize that this may have a gloomy tone, contrary to appearances. However, this area is tranquil and offers a pleasant respite from the hustle and bustle of the main island. Due to the exorbitant costs, only the wealthy and renowned of Venice can afford to be buried there nowadays. San Michele Island is a beautiful secret in Venice, although it is not a major draw for visitors. Rather, it is a holy site where the community gathers to pay their respects. Hence, you must be aware that the clothing standards are those of a religious establishment. 
now for the promised secret hidden gem for everyone that has stuck around until now. Not only does this city have breathtaking canals, stunning architecture, and delicious food, but it also has some of the most picturesque viewpoints in all of Italy. I'm talking about the San Giorgio Maggiore Bell Tower, which offers possibly the finest 360-degree views of Venice. To get to this magnificent viewpoint, take a Vaporetto, which is a Venetian public water taxi, to the island of San Giorgio Maggiore. Once there, proceed to the front left side of the church's interior, where you will discover an elegant glass elevator that will take you straight up to this gorgeous vista of Venice. From there, you'll have your breath taken away as you see the Queen of the Adriatic in all of her spectacular glory and have an incredible opportunity to bring back some of the best possible photos of the city. So, if you want to experience one of the best offbeat places in Venice, then make sure to add the San Giorgio Maggiore Bell Tower to your itinerary. Trust me, you won't regret it. We hope you enjoyed the video, but now that it's over, what did you think? What place on our list of the top places to visit in the Queen of the Adriatic is your top choice? Leave your comments down below, and don't forget to hit that like button. Also, click subscribe and turn on post notifications if you enjoy the video and want to see more from us in the future. Thank you for taking the time to watch our top 10 places to visit in the Queen of the Adriatic video. And we hope you have a wonderful trip to beautiful Venice.